Mr. Mauser. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Before I start, I would like to apologize. First of all, I am as deaf as a post. This is bilang. It works in French or does not work as well as in English. Second, I'm hopeful that the charts that I had dis had asked to be distributed will be distributed, so I apologize for them not yet being in your hands. I'm Gary Mauser, Professor Emeritus at Simon Fraser University. As part of my academic duties, I have published in criminology and political science for over 30 years. It is my professional opinion that Bill C-71 is a Rube Goldberg contraption that assumes, without evidence, that multiplying regulations will reduce criminal violence. The government offers concerns, but produces no hard evidence. Bill C-71 myopically focuses on gun crime, and a gun is used in less than 1% of violent crimes. The problem is criminal violence, not guns. Knives are used in as many murders as our firearms. You should have one of these in your hands. Worse, confusing licensed firearms owners, holders of possession acquisition licenses, with criminals, Bill C-71 misses the target completely. At least one million Canadians own guns without recourse to anything legal. These are the people that you should control. I ask the Senate to exercise sober second thought. Bill C-71 will not improve public safety. It is not a small step. It is, in fact, an endangerment to public safety because it misdirects scarce public resources. How big a threat is pal is a licensed firearms owner? Moose, moose in Canada kill more people each year than registered licensed firearms owners. He is unregistered, unlicensed. Criminal violence is gangs. It has increased since the magic number Minister Goodale picked 2013, while PAL holders have not increased their violence. At least 10 times as many people die each year from medical mistakes in our hospitals than PAL holders are accused of killing. The worst mass murder in Canada did not involve a firearm. Gasoline. Suicide. Even where guns are prolific, readily available, hanging, hanging is the preferred method of committing suicide. Here is a chart for the nation. As you can see, if you had one, the hanging frequency increases and the shooting frequency decreases. Hanging is your problem. Most suicidologists will tell you the problem is mental health and suicide, not access to guns. Healthy people are not suicidal. This room is not likely to commit suicide with anything. Bill C-71 also neglects the overwhelmingly positive contribution PAL holders make to Canada. If you assess cars, cell phones, sex, marriage, haircuts by only the negative consequences, you would think they were all dangerous and inimical. It is irrational to merely look at the downside of anything. No evidence has been produced that PAL holders are a major source of crime guns. No evidence has been produced that uh, there are significant abuses of the authorization to transport restricted firearms. On average, the number of PAL holders accused of homicide are so small that Statistics Canada is concerned about their reliability. 
Over the past 20 years, between 13 and 20 PAL holders have been suspected or accused of homicide annually out of 2 million people. Obviously, not all suspects are accused, nor are all accused convicted. As Senator Pratt has demonstrated, the lion's share of firearms homicide is committed by illegal gun owners. No methodologically solid, valid, no methodologically valid study has been able to find evidence that stricter gun laws or even gun bans have reduced general homicide rates or spousal homicide rates, as my two colleagues have already stated. A, a simple example. In 1995, the Canadian government banned over one half of all legally registered handguns. Banned, over one half. Not only have handguns remained the murder weapon of choice, but gang killings have increased. Gun bans, by the evidence, do not seem very useful. For over 30 years, legal gun ownership in Canada has increased, but homicide rates have decreased. Bill C-71 falsely, accumes, accuse, uh, Bill C-71 falsely assumes criminals get their guns from lawful domestic sources. The government claims the source of crime guns has changed. This is false. The only thing that has changed is the definition of crime guns. At the height of the long gun registry, StatsCan data showed that only 4% of guns used in homicide could have been stolen or used in a, 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 or, or a, a gathered in a straw purchase. Fourth, the government cannot provide solid evidence to support concerns about the problems with ATTs, or authorizations to transport restricted weapons. An access to information request found out that over a million ATTs were issued and 0.5%, less than one half of a percent, were any kind of abuses. For this, you need legislation, perhaps better management, Requiring additional ATTs divert scarce political resources. Internal audits show that there are serious backlogs in data processing for the police. This backlog denies judges and CFOs timely access to vital information. By increasing the paper burden, C-71 will endanger public safety. This is not a small step in the right direction. This is a big step backwards. To sum up. I asked you to sum up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. To sum up, Bill C-71 is fundamentally misguided. Gun owners are a public safety resource, not a threat. Bureaucratic busywork diverts scarce police resources away from programs that are more effective in dealing with violent criminals. Inflating the already bulging federal firearms bureaucracy will not solve the real problems facing our youth in gang-infested corners of Canada or women in abusive relationships. I respectfully ask the Senate to reject Bill C-71, exercising the sober second thought for which you were well regarded. Thank you. Thank you. We'll